if you think that Manchester United are getting worse with every single game, then that's probably true because they are. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys? Como están? And today we have to talk about Manchester United drawing 3-3 away from home at the side of Dudragao with Porto in the Europa League. Europa League is not a competition I would tend to cover that much, but Manchester United, really, come on, they're just very entertaining to watch. I don't know if it's because they're so bad or I'm just waiting for something to differ, to change, but... Come on, dude, how far deep can this club fall before they can actually put things back together? Like, they're really, really bad. I'm on Bruno Fernandes got a red card in this game. It's two red cards for him in three days. That's insanity. So, well, let's just talk. Let's 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 start dissecting this game. Uh, the team from Eric Ten Hag went into this game with Andre Onana, a goalkeeper that for me is very much scrutinized. I think that uh, he makes some mistakes, definitely, but it's not the main problem with this United side. Then we have Masarawi, Matisse de Ligue, Lisandro Martinez, and Diogo Dalot. Masarawi out of the back four, who I thought had the worst game. Casemiro and Christian Eriksen, which at this point, I think they're two ex-players, really. Bruno Fernandes, the captain, who got sent off. Marcus Rashford for the left and for the right, Amadialo. And the number nine was Rasmus Hoyland. Joshua Serksi, the signing that they made from Bologna, ex Bayern Munich, did not start this game. In the side of Porto, they went with Diogo Costa, who is a tremendous goalkeeper. But today, he will look very weak for the very first two goals. You're going to see why in just a second. We had Nahuen Perez, C. Pedro as the two center backs, Francisco Mora's left back, Joa Mario as a right back, Nico Gonzalez, ex Barcelona, Alan Varela, and Stefan Eustachio forming up that midfield. Galeno on the left, Samu Omorodion, who, whoa, dude, Samu. I'm just going to go full screen for this. What a guy. What an absolute beast. A monster. The most physical young striker I've seen since Haaland. Yeah, since since Erling Haaland. I'm saying it right now. What a, what a player Atleti had in their hands. They have a buyback clause. So let's be careful because if Atleti get him back, my goodness, they're going to have a player in their hands. I mean, Porto already do. What a, what a number nine. You have to see his goals. And then Pepe as a right winger. First of all, I wanted to say that this game already was, in my eyes, a... Basically, win or win for Ten Hag. He, he had to get the three points or he was going to get sacked. I mean, he sort of now can breathe because he has some sort of just a little bit of a margin with that uh, equalizer in the last few minutes from Harry Maguire. But let's be completely honest. This team is not clicking. This team is performing very bad. Everything was going to plan for Manchester United in this game. I mean, they had a very easy goal six minutes in. A mistake from Diogo Costa. Then the same thing happened. Diogo Costa made the same mistake again. Joao Mario was constantly getting exploited through his right-hand side. He's more of an attacking fullback than anything else. He's a winger, basically, playing at a fullback position. So that's what you get when you have a player like that in that role. But, I mean, Manchester United were already tuning up very early into the game. And what happened? Porto turned it around. Let's take a look at the first two goals from Manchester United here. First of all, I want you to take a look at this. It's Rashford on the left, six minutes in, and look at that. Soft hand from the goalkeeper there, and for the second goal, from Rasmus Hoyland, you will see it's almost exactly the same. Look at that, Christian Eriksen to Rashford, Rashford, soft pass into Rasmus Hoyland, same thing again. I thought at that stage, Manchester United clearly were going to be in a very good position to just win the game. Like, come on, you're in a team that's desperately um, looking now to find a way back into it. So Porto are going to leave so many plenty of spaces and gaps in behind for you to exploit with your fast players like Hoyland and Marcus Rashford and even Amad Diallo. Bruno Fernandes having the perspective of the entire, the entire pitch and he could just ping passes in and around. And I don't know what happened, dude. I, I really cannot explain. It seems like Manchester United doesn't have the mentality to to just get over teams at this stage. They look very... What's the opposite of being threat? Like, of being a threat, they're the opposite. They just literally do not know how to, to counteract, I think, the pressures of games of this instance or close them, close them out. They, they really don't. And I think that's where Eric Ten Hag is really having a lot of problems and struggles to communicate his, his idea and, and vision of play because they do not control the games. Even when Manchester United are 2 up, they're not controlling the game, and that's always very difficult. Normally, when you are that much up in, in a scoreline, like two goals up, you have that ability to, you know what, let's just possession-style-based football, you know, control the game, 
uh, reduce the tempo, the rhythm of the game, make it difficult for the opposition to then get back into it. And Manchester United don't do anything of that. They were constantly being overrun in the midfield. I think Nico Gonzalez and Stefan Eustachio uh, in the very first half had a tremendous uh, impact. They really did. Nico Gonzalez, I'm just really surprised with his evolution as a player. Normally, a, a guy we would normally associate with a double pivot position that could fit, for instance, very well in a Hansi Flick role at the moment. He's becoming this number eight that is just unstoppable. Constant box-to-box -box player, making recoveries very high up the field. And he was being a struggle for the for the Manchester United uh, midfield. They, they really, really were. Like I keep saying, it was just ideal for Manchester United to be in a position like this, tuning up after you have so many bad scorelines, losing 3-0 to Tottenham in the weekend. You could just come here, relax, take it easy, and go step by step. But it seems that even the first goals make it made it so United were very desperate. And they it was they didn't have a plan B if a situation like this were to happen. And that's where Porto just simply got back into it. And we got to give tremendous, um, I don't know, recognition to what Porto did. I think uh, after United just became less of a threat, Joao Mario became a much better player going forward. His presence became that much bigger into this game. He was one of the main f uh, creators for Porto, particularly in this game. And his services constantly to Samu were very dangerous. And that's how uh, Porto got the equalizers by the end of the first half. So look at this. This will be the first goal for Porto. And this is Nico Gonzalez. Look where Nico Gonzalez is. Then it's going to go Joao Pedro, Samu, and rebound on, on Pepe. Nico Gonzalez, Joao Mario, Samu. Yes, sir. Nicolas Pepe, that's a goal. Nicolas Pepe, that's what he meant. I don't know what the, what's the name of that guy, but it's Pepe. Um, but look at that, Samu. Like, Samu could have ended this game with a hat-trick. He really could have ended this game in a hat-trick because he was superb. He was just such a difficult player to mark for established centre-backs like Lisandro Martinez and Matisse De Ligt. De Ligt being the tremendous guy he is. Like, he's huge, dude. He's absolutely such a unit. That's his main point. His, his main attribute is that he's a unit. And, well, Samu, the thing is that he's a unit times two. He's humongous, this guy. And he won the ball... Amazing save from Onana, and then the rebound yeah, on Gonzalo. Pepe, and, and that's how, how they got the goal, right? If we take a look at back here, it's not Samu heading it, it's Masraoui, look at it. You see, it's, it's actually Masraoui almost scoring an on goal, which is one of an incredible on goal. But just the presence of that guy that you need two people to cover him tells you that this guy is, 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 is no easy, you know, um, player to mark. It's, it's a very difficult one. And a few moments later, same thing again. Nico Gonzalez opens it up to Joao Mario. It's literally the same play, guys. It's it's the same uh, play, the same sort of strategy that they used for the previous goal. They just repeated it. And my goodness, United, like, what the hell are you doing? And the third goal for Porto came very early in into the second half. So really, Porto could have found another goal to get themselves higher in the in the in the game this is the third goal from porto take a look at it you see pepe to samu and, and and that's simple it's simple like i said samu could have ended this game with three goals because of how difficult it was for manchester united to mark him he's such he's gonna be a, a very elite striker guys i i kid you not he's gonna be an elite striker because like you see he's very difficult the product the archetype of player that he is is just very difficult to mark and just for the sake of it let's watch the last goal from harry maguire here like come on it's just a cross from Eriksen. harry maguire being the absolute unit he is as well such a trunk he's like the tree trunk of a or the biggest tree in the world really but at the end they do rescue a point it's it's 3-3 three, three. they are still sitting in the europa league with two points but I just want to come up here and, and talk about it because I'm really surprised by how bad they are. They're they're getting worse every single time, every single game in, and they have a very difficult game now against Aston Villa, who just beat Bayern Munich in the Champions League. They're going to have to face them away from home. So I don't know how much longer Eric Ten Hag will be in a job in. I, I really do not know. It's very worrying for a United fan because I'm not sure where's the direction in, in this club. I look at it and I feel they're worse than Barcelona, they're worse than AC Milan. It reminds me like the probably the worst drop off I've seen in a, in a long time or at least in my lifetime. It really is, is worrying signs and we need a club of this stature to be good again. Like I'm not joking. I think United are probably the 
sec the th they're in the top three biggest clubs in the world. I would put Barcelona, Real Madrid, and United up there. I think that when you ask people that don't even know about football, they can name you those three clubs. And United, right now, they're not living up to that stature. So they should be getting back into it. And just to summarize everything up, I think Bruno Fernandes, um, he lost the plot a little bit in this game as well. And when you're the captain of a club like this and you're putting up those sort of performances, it just shows you that everything is wrong. He hasn't really been able to, to get into it or to get into the rhythm of, of the season already. It's, like I said, um, two red cards in three games, which is very... <laughs> it's funny, but it's also very underwhelming for someone of his stature as a player. So we have to see, basically, how can Bruno and, and United come back from this. I don't know. When, when your captain is playing like that, it sends a message to the entire team. And the message is that, well, guys, it's just like... The message literally fuck this. <laughs> That's literally what the message is. So... I don't know what what's your take on Manchester United, guys. I really am eager to hear what you have to say. I know it's a it's a interesting watch. I hope you you had the chance to watch it. If not, watch the highlights because it was an incredible game, and you need to leave the moment because they turn it around. I mean, Porto were in it, and Porto finished this game with very underwhelming impressions of it. Like they thought they could have won it, and they should have won the three points. And Manchester United also should have. I mean, they're gonna feel also very underwhelmed with the result. It's, it's one of those instances in football when they deliver us two teams an incredible match, but none of the sides are happy with the scoreline. And that is just, I think those matches are the best because it's two teams that absolutely gave them a mole, but ultimately one of them was trash. And in this case, it was Manchester United. So yeah, guys, that's going to be it for me right now. See you in the weekend. We have plenty of more football to talk about then. And let me know about basically maybe what other channels are you watching in the current time? Uh, what do you think of this videos? What's your feedback? What do you have for me guys? And maybe drop some names in that you would like me to collaborate with. I hope to to start creating more content with more people and, and just think that that could be a very interesting thing. So help me out there guys and, and let me know who do you want to see featured in the channel. See you in the next one. Take care. Ciao, ciao.